that's the microphone, so that's how people will hear when you're talking. That's us because that should be muted or else you'll end up getting feedback. Hello. See how to see how much it's delayed. Yeah, <laughs> I get the twenty seconds now. Beth, she says I can. Okay. Beth says she can. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'm just gonna turn that up a wee bit. That's just the microphone. All right. I don't want to get it too crazy though, or else it's going to start sounding really talky. Okay, so you're good to go. Okay. Look, we have people now that don't have a mic. Okay, all right. Thank good you. Luck. All right. Okay, good morning, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. Technology is great until it stops working. So this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, our, our newest product, which is called Shortcakes. And they are, um, they are uh, half of a layer cake. So a layer cake is a 10 inch square, shortcake is a five by 10 inch rectangle, all right? And we've come up with a pattern and it's called Shortcake and you can see it behind me here. This is it. And these are just cut down into squares and we've created a design. Now the pattern that we've got going on this morning is called shortcake and it has different layouts. I've produced one layout of the many layouts and you can produce whatever. But um, what I'm using is the stitch line because I'm the Lori Holt diva here. So I'm the one that has everything in my stash that's Lori Holt. So you, Tammy brings in something new, I have it in my stash. So we're going to begin. So in the layer cakes, there is 42 pieces of the stitch line. Okay. We've cut them in half, five by 10. For the pattern, you need two. So you can either buy one layer cake or two short cakes or three charm squares. All right. So first of all, if you've bought a layer cake, which I did last week, and I cut it in half, so I cut, I ended up with two short cakes, five by 10. Okay, I went through the layer cake and I've pulled some out because they're too light for my background. And my background is just a strictly a Colorworks uh, off cream color, okay? It used to be known as snow, the, the name has changed now and it is eluding me right now. So, um, You've cut your background fabric into nine and a half by 10 inch rectangle squares. Okay, so they look like this. Then you've got, this was my one layer cake piece that didn't make it in, okay, because I felt it was too light to go up against my background. I've also pulled out this piece these I call my simplicity ladies because they remind me of the old simplicity patterns. So I pulled some of them out and then of course I had extras that I could play with, okay, because I took home a layer cake. These I can cut it up into further scraps and that won't be a problem. All right, so we've got our two pieces, five by 10. You're going to put them right sides together and I'm just going to switch the screen to overhead. Again, bear with me, technology some days isn't my friend. Okay, so you've got your two five by tens. Okay, right sides together. And just watch, you know, 
make sure that the placement is good. You don't want something like two big flowery things together. All right, then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch. And what I would like you to do before you start this project is that you um, check your quarter inch seam allowance because that is so important in this quilt is that you have an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So you're going to sew them together, all right, right sides together. And then, of course, you've got something that looks like this, all right, something that looks like this. And then you're going to press that seam open and you're going to use it using your strip stitch, strip stick. All right, so you're going to place it on here. You're going to give it, just go along like this. Now this strip stick um, comes in two sizes. I have the larger one, which is this one, but we also sell the smaller one too, which is this size. So it's half the size. So when I'm um, when I'm working with the Lori Holt uh, smaller things, they will be um, more. When I have my little blocks, it's more. It's probably better that I use the smaller one, but I just don't have it yet in my stash. That will come with time. All right. So then you've got your two pieces together. And you're going to take your background fabric now and you're going to put your rectangle. All right, now this of course should measure nine and a half by 10 as does your background fabric. All right, now you've got this seam going here. You would think you'd sew this way, no. What I want you to do is I want you to sew down the side. So I want you to cross over that seam line, okay? Quarter inch both ways, all right? And sew down so that it looks like this, down each side, all right? And that's what it's going to look like. Now. You've got that pressed, you've got it look, looking like a two. All right. Let's go back to the other screen. So you've got it looking like a two. It looks like this. Anybody that's made a 20 minute table runner knows all about the tubes. Okay, so you've got it looking like this. Now I'm going to turn it wrong sides out again. We're going to flip screens. Due to COVID protocols, we don't always have everybody down here with us, so I'm running everything. All right, then you've got this sewn together. Now, I want you to take your ruler, and you're going to measure five inches across, okay? So you've got your five inch mark on your ruler. Just going to split that in half, all right? And you're going to come out with two pieces looking like this, all right? Now, this should measure, once you've got it done, nine and a half by nine and a half, all right? I want you to press that back seam open again, just like this. Your strip stick. Also give it a little press on the top. All right. And that is what we look like. So now just to be sure I'm on the straight and narrow, I'm going to measure nine and a half by nine and a half. I had a nice ten and a half creative grids ruler to come with me this morning. And of course, I left it on my sewing table at home. So this does measure nine and a half. There's no trimming to be done. We're perfect. What you're going to do is you're going to make 32 of these blocks and that will uh, give you enough 
to make the quilt that I'm going to talk about here today. And you can add or take away. This quilt would make a great baby quilt. All right. We're going to go back over to, there we go. All right. So we're back on screen now. So behind me here, you will see that I've created this quilt. And all it is is just threads flipping back and forth the block. Okay. So we've placed the block. This way, straight up and down, where you've got your five inch squares here and your nine and a half by ten here. All right, and then you flipped it the opposite way. And you keep doing that. You're going to go across seven blocks. Okay, and we're going to, I'm going to take it to nine rows down. And then uh, that will be the quilt top completed. Our pattern does not call for a inner border, outer border, but um, because I always make things difficult, uh, I, I'm going to add that, right? I always add, like to add a little bit extra work for me. It's still a quick and easy quilt. You know, you can do these four rows in no time, all right? But the placements are different. Now, I'm going to take this down, and I'm going to show you some of the different placements that we can put on um, our going to move this over just a little bit here because I want to swing it back. All right, so I've created a few blocks here. All right, so the placements can be anywhere different, okay? I'm just going to get out. So you can run opposite. Okay, so you can run opposite to this, where you have your zigzag going this way, okay? You can put every block the same, all the way across, okay? Alright, if you're doing a baby quilt, I would only do maybe four across, four down, alright? And that would make a nice size baby quilt with a little bit of flannel backing. And we have some great flannel backings in the store. All right. Okay, I'm just going to check for questions. No questions. Perfect. Everybody's understanding. So you can just do whatever you want. You can put four of these together. You can even do a four patch. Okay, and I'm going to show you a four patch here. Go ahead and switch back. Perfect. So you can take a four patch block, all right? Possibilities are endless with this quilt. Okay. And you can just do like a simple four patch like that. And then your alternate block could be uh, solid. A little bit trimmed down but yeah so it could easily be that could be your alternate block and if you're doing it quilting it yourself you could easily do a nice little quilt in, quilt design in there and then just something very simple in here okay these would make great little pillows you know alternate blocks again okay no questions perfect okay so my quilt that I have hung here is going to uh, finish at 63 by 81. Okay, but I want to add some borders. And I'm going to switch again to the front. So, what I chose this morning, and this will get maybe a little bit of talk going, is uh, what, to, what should I put as my borders? I chose this as my inner border. And this is my outer border. Okay? So that's what I think I will work with. We will also have, uh, this was also another option that I thought would look pretty cool as an inner border. And if you remember, I took this layer cake block out 
and so I could easily add it in. The two fabrics that aren't in the uh, shortcake bundle or any of the bundles are these ones and these are the backing fabrics that I am going to use. So these make great backing fabrics. They make great just fun little pillows, okay? So this could be the front of your pillow and just a plain back. Again with the color works or our Toscana, our um, any, any of those would be great. Our canvas, Dublin. All right, so just a plain back. I always add a zipper in the back of my pillow, okay? So you'd want to get a coordinating zipper to go with it, and everybody has those in their stash. This is also going to make another great pillow. These are just like, so this is like a cheater quilt, okay? And you can just do some, practice your free motion quilting at home. It's whatever you want, okay? And... So these are going to be, one is going to be backing and the other one's going to be, I'm going to make a pillow. All right, so that was going to be my ideas in this this morning. Then, of course, you will have leftovers. So what do you do with all those leftovers? You make some pin cushions. Okay, and this is a, a bread one that I did. One inch strips, sorry, one and a half inch strips. These are bigger slices of bread. These are Texas toast. So one and a half inch strips and you just sew them all together. Walnut shells I find are more effective than uh, the batting, all right? They preserve your pins a little better and I've stuck in Lori Holt's little fun little pins that she has and uh, it makes a great gift. You know, Christmas is coming, get a few of these done for your uh, sewing girls. And this one is my milk fabric and I put some pins in with my Holstein cow. All right. As they would say to me in the store, is that a nice looking cow? Okay. Now this pattern, and I'm going to show you the pattern now. This is our shortcake pattern. All right. It comes with free with any pre-cut that you order from the store or that you come to pick up. Okay. And again, if there's any questions or anything, just shoot the store an email. We'll be glad to answer them. And uh, it's a perfect little quilt. It gets you done in no time. And you feel like you've accomplished something in a day. This uh, took me probably uh, to put it all together, to get it all together, and sew a few extra uh, rows. I was probably two hours. You know, and it was just two hours of fun sewing. All right, it, you didn't have to think about, you know, matching a whole lot. Make sure that you're pinning, okay? Pinning is important, so make sure that you're pinning. Make sure that you're pressing your seams flat. It's a lot of strip piecing, so of course, then you can use your cutting gizmo, all right? Accurate quarter inch, and you're away to the races. You have no problems. Now, do we have any questions? Anything you need to know about what's going on in the store? Um, there's lots going on with Lori Holt. There will be lots coming up with Lori Holt. Uh, some great new products are coming out. She's got a new line coming out in December called uh, Cookbook. And then she'll have a chicken quilt coming out in uh, January as a sew along. She has a sew along right now, which is using the stitch line and the fancy shapes. And uh, what else is happening with her? She's got a few, I've got a few other little patterns that, you know, we'll be bringing out that I've asked Kim and Tammy to order for us here at the store, and we'll be doing some fun things with them, and as soon as classes resume, you know, there will be lots of Lori Holt classes, I'm sure, coming up. Beth, maybe a dumb question, but can you elaborate on the walnut shells? Sure I can. All those shells are, you buy them at the pet food store, okay? So, picture this, me going into a pet food store, and I'm looking, I'm lost, because my pets, you know, are Holstein cows, baby calves, okay? Those are my pets. 
So of course they don't have the feet I'm looking for. So the girl says, can I help you? And I said, yes, I'm looking for walnut shells. Oh, okay, is it for, uh, what type of animal is it for? I said, it's for a um, pin cushion. She looks at me. I said, yes, I'm making pin cushions. The walnut shells save the pins. So when you put them in, you hear it go in and it just uh, keeps them sharp, okay? So you buy them at the pet food store. You can just buy the littlest bag because really you don't, in this one here, you would need a good three cups, but in this one here, because underneath it, I've built it up with batting, so I just have the pin cushions at the top, the walnut shells at the top, and then you just stick your pins in, and as they go in, you'll hear it, it's sharpening your pin, no problem at all. All right, they're a great little gift. Does that help, Beth? I hope so. Any other questions that I didn't answer, you're confused about? I'm supposed to keep talking, I don't know. I don't, as my husband says, you never have a problem other times. So, I hope that helped. Uh, how wide do you cut your fabrics for the two borders for this quilt? Okay. Oh, and thanks, Beth. Okay, good. My borders, uh, my inner border will be cut at two and a half and finish at two, of course. And my outer border, because it's just um, a little finished edge, okay. So my outer border will be cut at um, four and a half and it'll finish at four. It's just something just to make it a little bigger to, to put on a bed through the summer. This will be a summer quilt, all right? So I will quilt it up and uh, we'll get it done for next summer because now I'm, you know, getting ready for Christmas. All right. Any other ideas? Any other questions? Did I answer your question, Sylvia? I hope so. You can cut your borders as big or as small as you want. Four and a half is a nice size for these little prints. I like that size. If it's a, a bigger print, say something like this, that you want to capture everything in, then, then go for um, a six and a half and finish at six. All right. Anything else? All right, well, it looks like we are done. I can't think of anything else that I want to say, but um, if you have any questions about this live stream today that, you know, um, you didn't get or you're, you know, unsure about, I'm here at the store till four today and I'll be glad to answer those questions. Don't forget that we're, um, video doing a live stream at two o'clock about marking tools with Tammy and there will also be another video boy are you ever lucky you get two times you get to see me today another video of my acorn table runner that I'm working on and uh, I show you how to put that together and uh, that line I was using my scraps from Lori Holt that I from previous quilts so that will all be in that video this afternoon so other than that, I want to thank you for joining me and I hope that uh, it's got you thinking about some pre-cuts rather than always buying the yardage. The pre-cuts are good because they're quick and fast and they're already cut for you, right? You just may have to do a little bit of uh, other cutting, but um, you know, it's just a fast and easy way. I call this mindless sewing. I don't have to think, I can just keep pushing it through and as long as I have the quarter inch, I'm good to go. All right. So I want to thank you for joining us at Quilter's Cupboard and the Lori Holt Day. And we will see you again at 2 o'clock.